everyone to NTSAD's Imagine and Believe. My name is Ryan Miller, a proud dad and member of the NTSAD community. Coming to you live this evening from Granville, Ohio. Thank you all for joining Imagine and Believe. Our event, much like the world, is not normal right now. But as our families know all too well, we continue to make the most out of each and every day. So, why are you tuning in tonight? What does NTSAD mean to you? How have these terrible diseases affected your life personally? Okay, admittedly, those are some heavy questions, I realize. So, to set the tone for a more positive evening and set the stage for the rest of the night, I ask you this instead. How has this, how has this amazing organization and all of the people working hard daily to ensure a better tomorrow for us all. For me personally, now that my uh, nerves are out of there, sorry about that. For me personally, when my son James was first diagnosed, I didn't want anything to do with NTSAD at all. Not even when he passed away 14 short months later in April of 2019. I was stubborn, I was hard headed, and I thought I could do it all on my own. And yet here I am tonight speaking with you all. And this isn't the first time. I have also spoken and led sessions at NTSAD's annual family conference too. Needless to say, my attitude and involvement has completely changed. Some days I still feel weak and downtrodden, oftentimes sad, stressed out. I'm a father of two, but yet I only have one son to take care of. I can tell you that I would not be able to face the day without the friendships and the hope that NTSAD has provided me over the past two years. So where did my attitude adjustment come from? To me, it's all about hope. I love my son. I love both of my sons, but I miss James dearly each and every day. In the weeks after he was set free, I struggled with the thoughts and emotions. I thought to myself, what good is missing him if I can't take something, a bad thing, and turn it into a positive? Upon submersing myself into the NTSAD community after James's passing, I saw so many families stepping up and leading the way. I saw Grayson's dad, John, going to Capitol Hill to speak to Congress about genetic issues. I saw Joey's mom, Sarah, running an amazing foundation just a few hours from where we live. I saw so much good. How can I be sad when I surround myself with so many awesome people? I knew there was a spot somewhere in this whole operation for me. And thankfully, with enough of a big mouth and a little bit of enthusiasm, here I am. As life settles into our new normal, worst phrase of 2020, by the way, might I add, but I digress. Shannon and I have begun to carve out our own path. We aren't burdened with a daily, sad, a daily crippling sadness, and that helps a lot. We're able to put our efforts into the things we hold dearly, including our son, Wesley, who turned three months old just last week. But instead of wrapping up every ounce of our being into him and his life, we want to share that hope with the world. I'm obviously not a public speaker, stammering through this thing here and there, but, and I'm sure there's a more poetic and succinct way of wording this analogy, but Wesley is and always will be my lighthouse. And a lighthouse does so much more good for the world when all, new, all who need help can see him. I hope Wesley doesn't mind me broadcasting everything we did, hit, everything we did to bring him into the world, including IVF, because, well, if he doesn't, I don't know if I can stop myself. My goal is to ensure that James's life is not forgotten and be able to help other families just like mine. Today, nearly two years after James passed away, I still can't stop talking about him. I can't stop talking about NTSAD. I can't stop talking about TASACs. It's just a part of my existence. It's who I am. I can't stop talking with the NTSAD families and the friends that I've created through this network and this organization. And that's not an exaggeration. Just ask anybody here. Uh, just last week, I was talking with a woman at my bank about TASACs and proudly showing off pictures of James. Any opportunity I can teach someone new about TASACs, I will no doubt capitalize on. Two weeks ago, Shannon and I were able to meet and have lunch with a new NTSAD family who just moved to our area. Beyond encouraging them in the normal things that Shannon and I try and do on a daily basis, we were also able to put them in touch with the same medical care team that took care of James for his short life with us. Seeing the path that James has laid out for children such as Finnegan and many others keeps me going. I want to motivate the researchers out there. I want to motivate the doctors and to keep pushing them for treatments. 
I want to be a beacon of hope for all and provide encouragement wherever I can. I know it's a bit of a silly song, but it goes back to my lighthouse analogy from earlier. This little light of mine, I want to let it shine each and every single day. And with that all being said, I encourage you to join me and make every day count. Shine on, help others, support NTSADs and their families as often as you can. Keep on imagining and believing. Thank Thanks. you so much. Uh, I'm Stacy Kalish, president of the NTSAD Board of Directors. Uh, sorry about our technical glitches tonight, but we're all adjusting to uh, taking in-person events to virtual and online. Uh, I join Ryan and the rest of the NTSAD team in welcoming you to Imagine and Believe. Thank you for spending time with us. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors, including Believe Level sponsors, Recursion and Tasha Gene Therapies. Your support allows NTSAD to continue our important work. Thank you to our families for their tireless efforts to care for their families and for one another. I'd also like to thank the NTSAD Board of Directors and our amazing staff for your passion and dedication. If you've previously attended Imagine and Believe, you know this year's event looks a little different, and that was the perfect example. Uh, while we wish we could meet in person, this year's virtual event allowed many more NTSAD families and our academia and industry partners to join us. Tonight, we are highlighting NTSAD families, as supporting families is the center of everything we do. In addition to Ryan, many families will share their experiences and perspectives. A few families will share their personal stories tonight and the support they received from NTSAD, including Lorelai Sandoval, mom to rockstar Isaac, and Sherry Siegel, mom to Rachel, who was joined by Dr. Guanping Gao, a gene therapy pioneer, and Dr. Florian Eichler, a member of NTSAD's scientific advisory committee. And at the end of the evening, Justin Ungerleider, brother of Evan, will share his hopes for the future. You also will hear from Sue Khan, NTSAD's executive director, who will talk about recent achievements and future direction. Now it is my role to tell you briefly about NTSAD's mission, history, our services, and accomplishments. NTSAD leads the worldwide fight to treat and cure Tay-Sachs, Canavan, GM1, and Sandhoff diseases by driving research, forging collaboration, and fostering community. As I said earlier, supporting families is the center of everything we do. NTSD was founded in 1957 by a group of parents seeking to help other families prevent this devastating disease. NTSD accelerated efforts to develop the first carrier screening for Tay-Sachs disease. This allowed many families, including mine, to understand their carrier status while planning their families. My parents were identified as TASEX carriers in the early days of the screening program and benefited directly from NTSAD's work in planning for a healthy family, including me. Despite the success of TASEX carrier screening within the Jewish community, families continue to face the cruel realities of these diagnoses. It became clear in the 1970s that connecting families as well as supporting them was incredibly important. I am very proud to share with you that NTSAD continues to build on our foundation of carrier screening by promoting expanded carrier screening and newborn screening to enable earlier diagnosis and treatment. We continue to build community among our families, including siblings, grandparents, and even families clinicians. Our services include professional and peer support, information and resources, and advocacy for families who are newly diagnosed, caring for a loved one, or grieving. In 2002, another group of NTSAD families partnered with NTSAD to form an initiative to accelerate research for effective therapies and treatments. Since then, NTSAD has made grants totaling more than $4 million which has been leveraged into more than $30 million in additional investments in research, leading to new therapies for Tay-Sachs, Canavan, GM1 gangliosidosis, and Sandhoff diseases. This crucial funding provides seed grants to researchers proof of concept studies that lead to larger grants, funds natural history and biomarker studies, and supports animal models needed to design clinical trials. My connection to NTSAD began when I was very young, when my grateful parents joined the NTSAD community. Knowing they were Tay-Sachs carriers allowed them to plan for a healthy family. As one of the first healthy children born to a known carrier couple, 
I was the poster child for the local NTSAD chapter, encouraging other families to have carrier screening. My mom, Meryl, served on the board too. As I grew older and learned more of my mom's involvement, I was fascinated by the science and amazed by the strength of NTSAD families. Being a part of this community inspired me to become a physician and a geneticist so I could help other families the way NTSAD helped mine. I believe that NTSAD truly is, as our families call it, the family you never wanted to be a part of but could never live without. I believe I am very fortunate to be included in this family. I believe the progress made in the past 63 years is the direct result of NTSAD's families and partners working together. I believe that today we are in the most exciting place we've ever been with clinical trials for all four diseases either happening or close on the horizon. I believe in the future there will be many more clinical trials that will lead to approved therapies and better and earlier diagnostics. I believe with your financial support, we can achieve all of this and more. If you have not already supported NTSAD and can afford to do so, please consider making a gift tonight. Donations via a credit card can be made at ntsad.org. Thank you. I was at the most vulnerable time in my life when this organization came into my life. It brought so much value into my life. It brought more value to my sister's life integrates all of us and makes us this larger family. To not feel like they're the only ones in the whole world that are going through what they're going through. I wouldn't be able to be having this conversation if it weren't for the many people I've met through in TSAD. I believe today that miracles are happening and are going to continue to happen. I believe that we can make a real difference as That's long great. as we have enough good coffee. <laughs> Every morning <laughs> to do all the work we gotta do. <laughs> I believe right now I could use a glass of wine. <laughs>I have a lot to be grateful for. I mean, I have my days when I'm emotional and I, I don't want to see anybody and I'm hard to deal with. My wife will tell you that. I believe the Miami Dolphins are going to beat the New England Patriots. <laughs> what year? <laughs> I believe in a year from now, hope things are way better than they are today. No, this is the serious and heartfelt section. I believe that there is hope for a future and that we will get to a point Families like ours and kids like Ava won't, won't be on the same track. And I believe it's, it's sooner than later. Be patient and be hopeful and uh, you know, be strong. I think we're headed in the right direction. We'll have more technology available and we will find here. This is, sounds really corny, but I actually say it's the best day ever. And I can't wait for tomorrow because it's going to be better. I believe in the future we will all look back with incredible pride this journey that we've been on hello i'm honored to be here my name is lorelei sandoval i'm wife to robbie i am mother protector and student of rock star isaac mcconna sandoval who battles tay sachs disease I'm also a registered nurse at one of the busiest mother baby units in all of California. As bustling as my hospital is, work is a type of respite to all the care, coordination, and advocacy I do with Isaac, who turns 10 years old in just two weeks. I don't know what his life would look like without knowing how to gather information and advocate for Isaac and for our family. I can tell you, but after Isaac was diagnosed in June 2011, NTSAD was really a lifeline where we got our information on what this disease actually entails. We've been a part, an active part of this organization ever since. We first spoke with the family coordinator by phone, a knowledgeable voice so far away on the other side of the country, and yet so near with her experience with Tay-Sachs and related diseases. 
We first met a few families online and by phone. Then we met the Marquez family and their son, Gavin, who was living with juvenile Tay-Sachs. To meet them and put a face to this disease meant so much. I had no idea what our path would look like going forward, but learned we could get through. We could find the strength to keep going. I also didn't know that this would be my introduction into what mentorship looks like in our community. Isaac has taught me so much. In the last nine years, we have gone through so many experiences that I can pay forward and teach others, both as a parent and through my lens as a nurse. I have co-led sessions on health and management session, symptom management at NTSAD's family conferences. I offer options for care and ways to speak with healthcare teams. One of my favorite learned communication tactics is making good ideas seem like doctors great ideas. If you've been having trouble getting the orders or direction in care that you know you need. A few years ago, I shared my knowledge about motion and massage for keeping affected children comfortable in an NTSAD care tips video starring my son, Isaac, which now reaches families around the world. Helping and connecting with other families is very gratifying. And I get to help others this way because of NTSAD. Just recently, NTSAD introduced me to another mom who lives an hour north of us. Her son was suddenly thrust into the complicated multiple symptom management stage of the disease. She felt very alone and she was unfamiliar with our healthcare system. Her son was hospitalized and I could not visit him nor his doctors thanks to COVID, but I met her outside from a safe distance, introduced her to Isaac, and we talked so many aspects of her son's progression and care. On our second visit, I gifted her with Isaac's wheelchair and shower chair, which he had outgrown. NTSAD also connected her with other families across the country. She is no longer alone, and she and her family have our love and our support. The beauty of this rare community is that families connect and support each other in many ways and develop deeper bonds by disease, age of child, progression, geography, or when they first attended their first NTSAD conference. Families often feel like part of a class where we kind of grow up together, lifting each other up, celebrating the little victories, and being there for the tougher moments. We are truly part of a global village. Families can share equipment with each other through one of NTSAD's grant programs. In addition to sharing Isaac's equipment, a few years ago, Isaac received a swing from Nathan and the Harney family. The swing still hangs happily in our backyard, giving Isaac re regular enjoyment. Every time I put him in that swing, I think of our East Coast cousin and our unique connection and how we honor Nathan's memory. We are not alone. Instead, we stand arm in arm with so many other amazing, caring, intelligent, and dedicated families, caregivers, and affected human beings. I am constantly nodding my head in adoration and appreciation of other NTSAD families and caregivers and their many talents. We come from many walks of life, yet these diseases bring us together as we make the effort to make life better, to hold on to hope, and to one day cure these diseases. In the meantime, as research progresses, I see NTSAD continuing to connect more families and affected patients as they live longer and as they work to maintain quality of their lives. Like Isaac, who at almost 10 years old has had unusual complications, not generally associated with infantile Tay-Sachs, but not so unique when you learn about a variety of other children living longer lives. I can imagine earlier interventions, including newborn screening, reliable treatments, and most of all, a cure. And I look forward to the day that when a family learns 
that their child has one of these diseases, that it's no longer death sentence. That idea gives me goosebumps and butterflies. I hope this season continues to fill you with hope and that you can find joy in the little moments. Thank you very much. And here's Isaac laying in bed for a few more minutes before he gets up for the day, letting mama speak to you all today. Hi guys. Oh, you get a little smile. You get a little smile. If you feel in your gut that something is wrong, don't give up. Don't let anyone tell you that there's nothing wrong. When you know as a parent that in your in your heart, you know something's wrong with your child. I would say the biggest piece of advice is you know your child, you know what they need, and you have that intuition that not many other people do. So stick to it, keep fighting, and don't just let somebody tell you what they think is right. You know your child the best. You know, so find those team of doctors and pediatricians, neurologists, specialists that really will listen to your concerns and that will help guide you to find the answers that you're looking for. First of all, if you notice something wrong, you want to know why. Even though, you know, you really don't want them to find anything. I was hoping and praying that they didn't, but of course they did. I needed time and I would recommend others take the time they need to digest or step away or whatever it is they need for their most immediate family to decide what do we do next. We needed to shift our expectations and try our best to find some sort of beauty and meaning in the life that we now had. Someone once told me, and I, you know, I'm probably as a couple different people, um, families through NTSAD, but they said diagnosis is the worst day. And um, I, I think it, I think they're right, because that's when your life changes. It's just know you're not alone, because um, we felt very like, why us? Why Ava? What did we do to, to get, you know, it's just why us? Like, I just don't understand. So um, that was, that was the hardest part. NTSAD was pivotal in our coping with the situation. Uh, you know, you, you go into this world where nobody else can appreciate or understand what you're dealing with. You meet with the parents, you meet with spouses, you meet with just others who actually can look you in the face and say, I know what you're going through. I understand. Because a lot of people can say, I understand, and they really don't. But through NTSAD, we have made so many friends and extended family that it's, it's just been absolutely wonderful. As I listen to each family's story on that circle and the thoughts and the feelings that came up, I felt like they're saying things that only were in my head. And just having that knowledge that I wasn't alone in my thoughts and, and experiences um, made all the difference. You can take measures to comfort your child and you can take measures to comfort yourself and your family. So among the broad spectrum of what's available to you for care needs to be a personal choice, one that no one else can um, call into question or consider to be wrong because there is no wrong choice when your choice is made from love. We met someone locally who had had a child with two sex years before and her comment was teach them as much as you can so it takes longer to forget amazing advice so we did that because we did there was not much else we could do do the best that you can in each day and uh that's just one of the difficulties of parenting a child 
with a disease like this. We had uh, hospice care for most of Adam's life after his diagnosis. And I found that to be um, very helpful and I don't think I could have done it without their support. You take the little things when you can, the smiles, the, the good things, and you just try not to look forward too much because that's, um, that's tough. Yeah. And when you realize that's like all you can do anyways, then you can enjoy things so much more. I would just beg them to be kind to themselves. Be kind to yourself. If you have a partner, be kind to your partner. Give a lot of grace. No one navigates these things easily. These are difficult, winding, bumpy roads. You know, do I want James, who was never able to roll over after five months, you know, he was never able to speak a word. <clears throat> you know, do I want him hanging around any longer than he needed to be? I, I don't think I do. You know, and I'm, I'm happy that he went when he went. It was his time. Just connecting with someone who you know has had a similar experience makes you feel less alone. And that's why it was, you know, interesting for me to be on that sibling call to hear, you know, these very prolific, I don't know, 13, 18 year olds, and there were younger kids. Um, you know, it was acknowledging that um, we all feel guilty because none of us can fix it. And by all meaning like parents as well as kids. I, I've noticed that a lot of parents feel guilt. They, they, they feel guilty a lot, whether it's because they've spent more time with the affected child and they feel like they neglected the other children or they feel like they didn't do enough. My advice to adults or the parents is just do not feel guilty. Um, if you feel guilty, the child is going to feel guilty. The unaffected children will feel guilty and then no one gets anywhere. There's a lot of hope. Um, I feel like we're just shy of that with Ava, you know, but the future families, I mean, it's still, there's a lot of unknowns, but I do think there's so much hope. I know that when my daughter was diagnosed 11 years ago, that at that time, there wasn't anything that could be done for her. But I know now still, her life still holds meaning and value simply because she is a part of this progression, just as every single child and affected individual has been. My connection to NCSAD is deeper than an organization that supported me. It, it's living in full of the life of all the families who have participated through it. Um, you know, we, we are a family. Wow, I'm Sue Khan, NTSCD's Executive Director. Thank you so much for joining us today. So far, we've had some very inspiring speakers and videos featuring, featuring our incredible NTSCD community. I remain in awe of how families find such strength to help and support one another, to build awareness, to advocate, and to drive research. I wanna thank all our sponsors and supporters of tonight's event, as well as everyone who has invested in our family's futures since our first Imagine and Believe event in 2009. Tonight's event has raised $90,000 thus far in normal times, in other words, last year. This event raised over 140,000 toward programs and services for families. We realize these are hard times for many, but if you can afford to help sustain our programs, please consider making a gift tonight. Ever since NTSD was founded, we have always been thinking of that day in the future when there could be treatments or cures. I want to acknowledge all of you, our partners in this work, who have dedicated your time, resources, and energy to finding treatments for children and adults affected by Tay-Sachs, Canavan, GM1, and Sandhoff diseases. Of course, we don't do this work alone. We continue pushing forward in honor of all who came before us and our entire community. Each child, each adult drives what we do and we honor them all. I'll never forget 13 years ago when I had just joined NTSD, a friend from business school challenged me, 
asking me to justify the investment in developing therapies for these very rare diseases. At the time, I recall what Emil Kakas, a pioneer in rare disease drug development said, no disease or person is too rare to deserve a treatment. The Talmud, a Jewish religious text, may say it even better. Anyone who saves the life of one person is as if he saves the entire world. I am proud to say that after many ups and downs and tremendous perseverance by our community, there are three active clinical trials and at least seven more drug development programs, a big change from just one year ago. Nearly 50 patients across the globe are enrolled in these trials and there are an estimated 150 people involved in natural history or other clinical studies. And just yesterday, Axavent Gene Therapies announced the FDA's approval to start the first ever gene therapy clinical trial for children affected by Tay-Sachs and Sandhoff diseases. Like many clinical trials, Axavent's achievement comes after many years of extremely hard work, in this case by the Tay-Sachs Gene Therapy Consortium, a team of researchers from multiple institutions. During this time, NTSCD awarded over $2 million in grants toward research on gene therapy vectors, animal models, natural history studies, and more, all leading to acts events licensing of GM2 and GM1 gene therapy programs from UMass Medical School, which occurred just less than two years ago. Years of imagining, believing, driving, collaborating, and investing has brought us to a new day across all of our diseases. There's still a long way to go before treatments are a reality and the progress isn't as fast as our families need it to be. We also know that while clinical trials offer a new level of hope, patients and families face complex decisions and logistics and possibly another level of disappointment and grief. NTSCD remains poised to support and guide families as we navigate the new landscape of clinical trials together. Nonetheless, the progress is real and we should celebrate it. These current studies and trials build upon many years of research and investments, not only by NTSD, but by the NIH, medical centers, universities, and industry. I want to acknowledge and thank the large teams from industry and the clinical sites who are supporting these studies, including many who are sponsors of tonight's event. While industry is investing more resources in developing therapies for our specific diseases, and TSCD is investing too. In 2021, we plan to hire a director of clinical and research initiatives to drive our expanding work and research. For 20 years, NTSED's focus has been funding basic and translational research. While we will continue to fund research, our scope is broadening to early detection, including newborn screening and earlier diagnosis for symptomatic children and adults. We also are expanding our work in clinical development where we will rely on families and clinicians to contribute to natural history studies, registries, clinical trial study design, and ideas for improved supportive treatments. As we engage in these initiatives, NTSED will continue to play a key role as a trusted partner and neutral convener of researchers, clinicians, companies, patient groups, and patients. Our ultimate goal remains to improve the quality of life for adults and children affected by our rare diseases. Together, we imagine and believe and make possible a brighter future for all. Thank you. And now, I am honored to share a video with you featuring Sherry Siegel, Rachel's mom, worldwide gene therapy expert, Dr. Guang Peng Gao from UMass Medical School, and leading physician and clinical researcher, Dr. Florian Eichler from Massachusetts General Hospital. When Rachel didn't meet any of her milestones, she couldn't roll over when she was a baby. She was very irritable. She had a larger head than normal. It wasn't until four months old when the doctor said, okay, let's you know, have early intervention come and check it out. They came to the house, they said there's definitely something wrong. Um, and they called the neurologist right from that, from that my house right then and there. And the neurologist uh, said that they wouldn't see her for another two months uh, because it's not life-threatening. A two month wait to get one step closer to a diagnosis. But a stroll through an Israeli street fair with an NTSAD booth sent the family in a different direction. 
and there was a, a table with these uh, two people sitting there and they had pamphlets and books and I said what's this about and they said well it's a uh, for Ashkenazi Jewish families and then I came across Canavan disease and I saw all the symptoms listed and I saw a picture of one of the children with Canavan and he had the most angelic face and Rachel had the same angelic face and I said I, I think Rachel has Canavan disease and so um, at the six month visit we did all the tests and sure enough come to find out she did have the Ashkenazi uh, mutation for cannabis disease. I'll never forget the words, there's no cure, no treatment, nothing you can do. Take her home, enjoy her while you can. She probably won't live past the age of four. What Sherry didn't know was that Dr. Guang Ping Gao, who had helped discover the gene responsible for the cannabis mutation, had been doing all he could for the previous 10 years to find a way to deliver gene therapy across the blood-brain barrier and treat central nervous system diseases. By the early 2000s, he had discovered a vector virus to do just that. Because this virus have a, a unique property can cross blood-brain barrier and to distribute it to wide and broad uh, area of the brain. So that, again, when, when you have the vehicle and then we have the gene, now we can start our journey uh, to discover the gene therapy or develop gene therapy for the disease. And of course, my, my, my mind and my focus, still I try to develop gene therapy for cannabis disease because that's how I start my research. In 2003, Rachel was enrolled in a clinical trial to test the safety of gene therapy. Five years later, she would meet Dr. Gao. He was recruited to open his own research lab at UMass Medical Center in the same building where Sherry worked. When I did meet him with Rachel, um, it was so wonderful, you know, he was, he was so giddy to meet us and I, I was as well, you know, to, for him to be so as excited as I was really meant the world to me um, because we've been, you know, holding on for so long trying to figure out how to help Rachel and then to find, you know, this wonderful researcher who wants to. It's, it was just, words can't express it. And, and Sherry uh, showed up in my office together with lovely Rachel. I always, that image always in my mind, because through that conversation, I see that how important for me, for my professional career, or even my life, is to be able to come out some therapy to treat children like a Rachel, to change their quality of life. NTSAD supplied seed money to Dr. Gao to develop gene therapy using his new viral vector. This led to larger NIH grants, which led to licensing by Aspa Therapeutics. And in the near future, Dr. Florian Eichler will oversee an upcoming clinical trial at Mass General Hospital. I think the NTSAD has, has been a role model in this whole field and, and been able to, from the very beginning, bring scientists and clinicians together, also understood how to engage industry partners and create an environment where exchange and sharing, not only of data, but also of, of uh, insights and perspectives is possible. And, and so, you know, keeping that continuous dialogue and communication open has really allowed us to move forward in, in ways that are not possible in other degenerative diseases. And NTSAD has recently launched a whole uh, strategic initiative to uh, understand the full scope of not only uh, research and, and treatments, but also uh, what is needed for symptom management, for quality of life, and all of those things are equally important. I've you know, been a member of NTSAD for 22 years. And to know this year we're actually using the words, gene therapy is here. We're, we're going to make it happen. It's, it's amazing. And none of it would have happened without having NTSAD in, in part of my life. My goal has always been 
that within Rachel's lifetime, I hope that there's a cure. And, um, you know, I keep on waking up going, it's a, it's a new day, let's do it. Hi, my name is Justin Ungerleider. I would like to thank everyone who took the time to join us tonight, as well as those who were kind enough to share their stories. NTSAD is very near and dear. Sorry, NTSAD is very near and dear to me and has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. In 1995, my older brother Evan was diagnosed with Tay-Sachs disease. The first two years of my life were spent watching Evan succumb to this horrible disease. My earliest memories are riddled with fear and confusion, watching Evan suffer from dozens of seizures each day. He struggled to eat. He couldn't see or hear. I watched as Evan was given food through feeding tubes and got breathing treatments. All the while, Evan was rapidly deteriorating. It made no sense to me that I was healthier and developing faster than my older brother. One of the worst memories forever ingrained in my mind is hearing the doctors tell my parents that there was no hope for Evan. The doctor said they would not see a cure or treatment for children like Evan in my parents' lifetime. Evan would not live a full life. No parent should ever have to hear that there's no hope. From that moment on, I was determined to ensure that no other family would experience what mine did. As tragic as it was watching Evan suffer from Tay-Sachs, I was inspired to travel down a road where one day I could help ease the pain and suffering of other children and their families. I began volunteering at fundraisers for Tay-Sachs with my family to raise money for research. However, I didn't fully understand why we were doing this if there was no hope for children like Evan. It seemed pointless. But in 2009, I finally saw my first glimmer of hope. I was told about a rare breed of sheep called Jacob sheep who have a naturally occurring form of Tay-Sachs that would be essential in research towards finding a treatment. I finally had hope that ending this devastating disease was within reach. I launched my own Adopt-A-Sheep project, raising thousands of dollars to care for these sheep. Years later, at another NTSAD event, I met Dr. Miguel Santa Estevez and shared my desire to pursue medicine. Soon, he offered me an internship in the gene therapy lab at UMass Medical School, where I participated in Tay-Sachs research. I couldn't believe it. Only 18 years after being told there would never be a treatment for this disease, there I was working on it. I didn't think it could get any better until four years later, after graduating from college, I was offered a job in the same lab. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to witness how dedicated these researchers are to ridding the world of diseases like Tay-Sachs. It's hard to describe the thrill of seeing the research progress, starting with raising money for the sheep to working side by side with other researchers on the development of a treatment to holding the hand of one of the first Tay-Sachs patients ever given this treatment. And as of yesterday, we heard about the news of the approval of the treatment by the FDA, of the FDA to enter the clinic. If there's one thing I want you to learn from my story. It's that there is hope. There's always hope and I've seen it firsthand. I remain committed to proving Evan's doctors wrong. My parents, my sisters and I will live to see effective treatments for Tay-Sachs in our lifetimes. And I will continue to help make that happen as I am in my first year of medical school. None of this would be possible without NTSAD and our community of families and researchers working together. I know hearing stories like Evans and other children who suffer from Tay-Sachs, Canavan, GM1, and Sandoff diseases inspire researchers and physicians like Miguel, Dr. Eichler, Dr. Gao, and many others who work tirelessly to find treatments. I know that many of you have already made generous donations to NTSAD in our shared cause, but I cannot stress how important it is to support NTSAD today to keep pushing for breakthroughs in research for rare genetic diseases. We are so close. If you have not already made a contribu contribution, I urge you to do so now. You can donate online with a credit card at ntsad.org. And to all the families like mine, Know that one day there will be a world where these atrocious diseases no longer exist, where children like Evan will grow up, go to school, make friends, and simply live normal lives. And this day will come soon. Please continue to support NTSID, and thank you so much. I hope you've all had a great night.
Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks to all of our speakers and families for sharing their stories and their perspectives. I'm always amazed at how giving NTSAD families are of themselves. If you've not already made a donation tonight, it's not too late. Please visit ntsad.org. We're also going to take a screenshot to remember tonight. On three, everyone smile and say, believe. One, two, three. Believe. Finally, we plan to keep the Zoom room open for just a little while for everyone to be able to connect with each other via the chat. Enjoy and thanks again for joining us tonight. Be well.